Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to look how to make a better selection using our paintbrush tools. You can combine an initial selection, jump into quick mask mode, and then use brush tools to refine it. Let's see how. I've gone ahead and opened up this picture of a duck. Yes, it's a duck with several more ducks. And what I'd like to do is defocus the background, particularly this one here in the middle. Now, we'd like to draw attention to the duck here, and to do that, we need to make an accurate selection of just the duck. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this background layer. So we've got two copies. I just right-clicked and chose Duplicate Layer. We're going to take the Quick Selection tool, which is part of Photoshop CS3 or CS4, and drag through to make an initial selection. If I hold down the Shift key, it'll add to that selection, and you see that we can get more of the image grabbed. Now this does a pretty good job and attempts to isolate itself to just the parts that we click on, but eventually it will grow and pick up more pixel details. Notice there we got some parts of the image we don't want. Holding down the Option key and clicking will subtract there, and that helped. Let's continue to add to the selection, shift clicking. There we go. And we work our way through. And that worked pretty well. Now what we need to do is refine that selection, and to do that, I'm going to press Q to enter Quick Mask. You see when we do that, an initial border goes around the object, and the red areas indicate what's masked. I'm going to double click here on Quick Mask, and change the opacity of the Quick Mask to 85% to make it easier to see what's hidden. We'll press Q again to go back to Quick Mask mode, and let's call up the Navigator so we can zoom in and start to touch things up. We'll start up here with the duck's head. You see there we've got a very rough selection on the back of the neck. I can grab the paintbrush tool, adjust the hardness of the brush and its diameter, and then start to paint. Painting with black adds to the mask. Flip that over to white and you could subtract. Using D you can load the default colors and then X to toggle. Notice we could paint over the object here and get a nice gentle selection. If necessary, lower the opacity of the brush and use multiple strokes to build up. What's also cool is you could take the blur tool, right bracket for a bigger brush, and blur that selection edge. You're not actually blurring the image, but you're blurring the mask around the edge, which makes a more natural selection. And that works great if dealing with soft areas such as feathers. Now in here we need a little bit more, so I'll grab B for brush, left bracket for a smaller brush, and we'll just paint it in. There we go. Fill a little bit more in here. That works well. Switch back to the Blur tool and just go over those edges a bit, making sure they're not too hard. B for brush, paint a little more of those feathers back in, and then go back to blurring. Now what's cool too is you could switch to smudge and grab the darken mode and just push those mask pixels in. And that lets you basically finger paint to get what you need to. And you could use that on little divots and clean up your mask as you see fit. Now, great compositing takes a while, so you may find yourself tweaking here. I'm about ready to call it done and show you the end results. Let's just grab our paintbrush here and fix the foot. There we go, he's got his webbed foot back and lightly touch up the remaining edges 
with a quick drag. There we go. Now, I'll press Command or Control Zero to zoom out, and you see we have the selection there of the duck. When we press Q, it becomes an active selection in the image. If you need to, you could store that as a layer mask. Let's turn the background layer off, and then click the layer mask icon. And you see that the duck has been extracted from the background. Using the quick mask like that is a very useful way to refine an edge and get a really good composited image. Let's go ahead though and quickly turn that off by shift clicking. And what I want to do instead is load that selection. Command click for load. There it is again as a quick mask, Q, or we can exit. And that works great. We're going to select the background layer this time and turn on its visibility. So we'll go ahead and choose Select Inverse. I'm going to make a copy of that layer so we can always undo if we need to. And we'll say Filter Blur Lens Blur. Go ahead and tweak the radius and really throw that background out of focus. There we go. And click OK. And what you'll see there is that we've actually defocused the area around the duck made a gradual focus for the area under the duck's feet, and kept the duck perfectly in focus. Now, this technique works on things that are not ducks. What I wanted you to see is that you can combine the quick mask tool with other techniques to get very dramatic effects. Here we did a nice job of keeping the duck in focus while throwing the background further out of focus. Here was the original image, here's our new results, and you see that really worked quite well. My name is Rich Harrington. I thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. You can find lots more resources at our website at rastervector.com. And while you're there, you can take advantage of a special offer from Peach Pit Press. They're offering 35% off our new book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4. Just use the discount code UAP2, and when you use that at checkout, they'll knock 35% off of the book. Thanks again for joining us.